All right, welcome guys to another GeoGuessr video. Uh, I've just finished recording my weekend series comparative GeoGuessr stuff. So I thought I might as well get the weekly play alongs done as well. Um, so let's get started. Let's get into uh, the usual play alongs. Let's start again with the diverse world. I think that's a, a great map to start off. Standard map, everyone knows it, everyone likes it. Uh, well, maybe not everyone likes it, but uh, no move, no time limit. That sounds right. Uh, here's the link. Let me put that down here. Okay, cool. So let's get started. Um, if you don't know what we're doing, we're just doing a play along. So the links for all these challenges will be in the description. Um, so you guys can play those challenges. And then afterwards, you can watch my perspective. Uh, I'm trying to make this as uh, educational as possible. So instead of making like a GeoGuessr tips video, I want to like give tips and talk about my thought process behind making guesses while I play. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys have played the challenges and now you can see my perspective and see my reasoning behind my guesses. So let's go. Game one. <sighs> a diverse world and here we have a... Okay. So, um, first things first, we have a dryish landscape. We have an antenna. This is a very common antenna in Europe. Uh, usually, if you have an antenna, there's a very good chance you're in Europe. Uh, there are some other places that do have an antenna, like uh, Taiwan, for example, has an antenna. Um, but uh, usually, like with this kind of landscape, I think you should be able to figure out that this is Europe. There's a house as well. Looks quite European. Um, and again, we're driving on the right, so that eliminates a few places too. So I think uh, you can establish that here in Europe, sun looks in the south as well. Um, all right, so now that we know we are in Europe, let's move on to the next hint, which is this pole. Um, again, these poles are very useful. Also, this, uh, this, these, uh, this landscape, these trees and uh, this kind of vegetation is quite common in Spain and Portugal, uh, but you can also get it sometimes in like Greece um, and a few other places could have similar looking landscape. Uh, but the biggest hint here is, uh, well, it looks kind of like Southern Europe, if that makes sense. But uh, yeah, to differentiate between the Southern European countries, this pole comes in very handy. Uh, you can also see a similar pole in Brazil because this is Portugal. This is a Portuguese pole. Um, yeah, you can see similar poles in Brazil, makes sense. Um, and another tip for Portugal, which uh, not really too many people know about, is uh, this thing. So you have these hunting signs, which are red, white, red. There's one of it. Uh, here's another one, and there's a third one as well. So these red, white, red hunting signs are exclusive to Portugal. Uh, you get a black and white hunting sign in Spain. So that's a very useful tip and very useful way to differentiate Spain and Portugal. So with that, uh, that being said, we know that we are in Portugal. We have this hunting sign. We have the pole. These signs are also like a typical Portuguese road signs. So that also helps. And uh, I think those are black and white, uh, black and yellow chevrons, which are also Portuguese. I'm pretty sure Spain doesn't have black and yellow. I think they have uh, uh, blue and white and black and white. If I'm not wrong. So, uh, black and yellow chevrons, Portugal, also a few other countries, but uh, that helps. And the uh, most important hint is this hunting sign. So, uh, northern Portugal is quite hilly. Um, this doesn't really look mountainous. Uh, I think this is probably just like middle Portugal, to be honest. I don't know. Yeah, good enough. My earlier plonk was probably even better. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's move on. Next round. <sighs> okay, so instantly you have the sun in the north, so you're in the southern hemisphere. You have a double white lines in the middle, and you have this bollard. So if you remember from last video, I talked about this. This bollard is an Australian bollard. Um, with a, like a white bollard with like a red thing on top. And uh, double white lines, no outer lines, very common in Australia as well. So with that, we know which country we are in. Um, 
like uh, I can see people thinking of South Africa here, but again, you don't get this polar in South Africa, so that's a way to remember. Uh, but I don't really know what state this is in Australia. Um, you can get kind of whitish soil in South Australia, like uh, very dry as well. Would make sense for it, but this doesn't really feel South Australian to me. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have any more tips to give for recognizing the state here, I think. Mm. I'm going to try my luck with South Australia, but I could be wrong. Oh, it is. Okay, that's good. Uh, I don't really know where in South Australia it would be. But um, as far as I know, oh, I didn't mean to click that. As far as I know, um, most of the coverage is like down here. And then you have coverage along this highway and the A87. So other than these two highways and uh, this road also, most of the coverage is like this part of South Australia. So that way you can make a fairly close guess in South Australia. But uh, yeah, let's move on. Next round. <sighs> okay, so we are driving on the right. Looks like it's a completely white number plate. Um, and the road is not in the best condition. All these things combined make me want to say that this is Russia. Russia is also really flat in most places, so... This flat landscape would make sense, but... Uh, I'm not convinced. Uh, could this be Baltic? Could this be like Lithuania? Maybe. But uh, the absence of the blue European badge, the blue EU badge on the plate, makes me want to say that this is probably more Russian. Like these, houses, these houses look quite Baltic, so I don't know. Um, I'm not quite sure. So I'm between Lithuania and Russia for this. Why not Latvia and Estonia? Um, it's probably because uh, it doesn't really... I don't know. In my eyes, it's just... Uh... Ah, but to be fair, with like this kind of road. I'm going to try my luck with uh, Russia. But yeah, for Latvia and Estonia, I feel like they just generally have a nicer feel, nicer look than Lithuania. That's just uh, probably in my head. I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. If this is Russia, then could be close to Moscow, could be down here, could be even further south. So I could just hedge all these areas and just go in the middle. It could maybe be near Omsk, but I don't think so. Alright, let's try it. Oh, Ukraine! Damn, I didn't even consider Ukraine there, but that makes sense. Near Odessa. Okay. Ukrainian roads aren't the best either, so... Uh, well, now... Wait. I was not here. I was here, wasn't I? I swear I couldn't see that place. Yeah, we were here. Uh, if only we could move one step. You can see this plate, and you clearly see the Ukrainian badge on it. But uh, on this plate, you couldn't really see it, so... I didn't think of Ukraine there. This didn't feel like a Ukrainian plate, but uh, fair enough. Good job if you got Ukraine here. Well done. Uh, so let's move on to the next round. Okay. Um, sun in the north. Um, we're in the sun hemisphere. Double yellow lines, white outer lines. I've talked about this a bunch of times. Very common in the Americas. Uh, in my opinion, this is Brazil. Because uh, A, you have the black back of the signpost, if you remember I talked about it. Uh, the back of the signpost in Brazil is black in color. And then you have this as well, which is a Brazilian, I don't know, like a kilometer marker, but it also says the road number on it. So uh, usually if you're playing moving games in Brazil, this is what you're looking for, the road number. Um, so you find them on those little blue signs. Uh, so we've established this is Brazil. Um, if this is Brazil, this could be Espirito Santo, Rio de Janeiro, 
Santa Catarina, Rio Grande do Sul in my head. Uh, because of these hills. These hills are very common in these four states. It could also be like Minas, Sao Paulo, but I think you get my point. It's like uh, along this area. But we have some signs. It says Rio Sul, so I'm wondering if that means Rio Grande do Sul, but uh, Benvenida, Villa Nova. I wonder if I can find this even. If I had the road number well, like uh, closer to me, I could have maybe found this. Villa Nova and... Hmm. Do I have a phone code? Phone codes are pretty useful in Brazil. I could... Like, uh, I know the phone codes in these areas, so... Rio Grande do Sul would be five something, I think. So, hmm. Doesn't seem like we have it. Or it could just be Rio de Janeiro and it's just a bait. It doesn't really mean Rio. Rio Sul doesn't really mean Rio Grande. Hmm. Uh, I don't know what to do. I'm going to go back to Rio, I think. I don't really... Like, I feel like this looks more Rio than Southern to me. Do we have any Parana Pines? Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to go with uh, close to Rio Janeiro. But it could be down there. Yeah, okay, well, I'm glad I did this. Um, yeah, we were in Minas, uh, I guess... Uh, makes sense still like the general area like this area has these kind of hills so does uh you'll get similar hills in the south as well but uh yeah uh fair enough can we see the place now we don't even see villanova so cool move on to the next round and this is a very easy new zealand uh the sun is in the north so that helps we're in the Southern Hemisphere, and then <clears throat> New Zealand has these white block signposts, which are, uh, yeah, which are like quite typical of New Zealand. Um, and uh, yeah, you you could you don't really get them in Australia too much. I mean, you get them in Uruguay, but uh, <laughs> hopefully you can tell apart uh, Uruguay from New Zealand. You have English language. You have a mountain in the distance. You won't usually get that in Uruguay. Um, so, and then you also have a street name here. Can I read it? No. But yeah, also driving on the left, you can see the signpost is on the left side of the road. And uh, yeah, white middle line. Most of the Americas have yellow middle lines. But uh, anyway, now that we know the country, let's talk about where in New Zealand. Um, so, it's quite flat. Uh, which is uh, quite common on the North Island, but it's also common near Christchurch. And I think we are close to Christchurch uh, just because of, uh, I don't know, I've just seen this area too many times in Geogets. It just looks uh, very similar to it. I could be wrong. I could end up eating my own words. But uh, there's also a mountain in the distance north, which also makes sense for Christchurch area. So I just want to quickly see if I can find like a road has a similar road angle maybe. But uh, if not, then I'll just go for something. All right, I can't really find it, but uh, let's go here. I could be wrong, but uh, this is my guess. Could be somewhere in this area. Ah, if I only searched a bit more, I could have found that. That road angle makes sense. 4979, not bad. I'll take it. Uh, 2693 is uh, my score for game one. Uh, most of my points were lost in Russia and Ukraine. But uh, if you did uh, get it, then I'm sure you guys have a better score. So well done. Everything else was kind of okay. Brazil, I could have maybe gotten closer. But uh, yeah, I'm not really too upset about the Brazil guess. So that's uh, game one. A diverse world, no moving. Um, 20, oh, I, I was exactly 2,000 kilometers off. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, and let's move on to the next, next game. Let's, uh, try an improved world this time. Also another good world map. 
um, let's set it to no moving uh, let me copy this link cool and <clears throat> let's uh, play the game so hopefully you've played this game by now and now you can watch my perspective all right so straight away we have a follow car behind us uh, you probably know about this but um, this is a uh, pretty common in Nigeria uh, you also have a follow car in Kenya by the way people don't usually know that sometimes but uh, uh, since you have the snorkel in the car in Kenya, people tend to ignore the follow car, but you do sometimes get it. Uh, you, I think you get it most of the times. But uh, anyway, we don't have a snorkel. Nigeria has this uh, like a weird blur though. So that could also help. But yeah, that blur, this follow car, you know you are in Nigeria. And... Uh, I don't really know how to explain it, but I think there's like different follow cars as well for different regions in Nigeria. So in Abuja, you have a different car, Enugu, Benin, Lagos. So people learn all of this stuff. I'm not super uh, confident with it. I don't really know it too well, uh, but I'm pretty sure that this is Lagos or it could be also Lekki. could be one of these Western places as well. Uh, but yeah, it just really looks typical Lagos, a lot of buildings, um, just feels coastal, palm trees and whatnot. And uh, yeah, Sebili Kazim Street. Um, I kind of want to go lucky here because uh, I don't know, <laughs> kind of feels like lucky. Uh, it's where also could just be Lagos or on the other side. So I'll go here. Just hedge a bit. <sighs> nope, just Lagos. Okay, so here we were. Um, there's a street name, but that would have been impossible to find. It would have taken ages of scanning. Uh, but it's a good start. 4940. Let's move on to the next round. All right, sun in the south. So we have a bunch of cars. Driving on the road, driving on the right. We have this electric pole. So these are um, a bunch of hints. So let's go through this one by one. Naturally, this should be Europe with these kind of houses, uh, very European houses. If you uh, if you didn't uh, if you don't know what a European house looks like, uh, I mean I'm sure if you play a bunch of games, you'll st you'll get more accustomed to it as well. But uh, yeah, very typical. European houses. Uh, sun in the south also makes sense for the northern hemisphere. Um, and I think we are in Spain. I'm not 100% certain though. Ah, we are not. We are in Bulgaria. Okay, so I'm glad I noticed this. Uh, I was a bit confused. These houses don't really look Spanish. They look Eastern European. Um, but I'm glad I, <laughs> glad I didn't make a mistake. So yeah, we have a Cyrillic uh, on this bin which helps. Bulgaria uses Cyrillic. Um, it's, uh, well, I was going to say it's the only country which uses Cyrillic that has Gen 4. Uh, if you don't remember your camera gens, there'll be a link in the description. Uh, I have talked about them in the past. And uh, yeah, Gen 4 camera, very vivid colors, looks very nice. Uh, often has a blue car as well. And uh, Gen 4 with antenna as well is really common in Turkey, Bulgaria, Hungary. So that also helps with uh, identifying B Bulgaria uh, because often Gen 4 you can't see an antenna. Uh, and then this pole, it's not really super common in Bulgaria, you, but you do get it in Bulgaria. So that pole threw me off for a bit. I thought maybe it was a Spanish pole, same with this. Uh, but no, it's just an uncommon Bulgarian pole, but you do get it in Bulgaria. Uh, and the landscape and the houses make a lot of sense for it. Again, a Cyrillic. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that Cyr o Bulgaria is the only place with Cyrillic with Gen 4. But uh, Russia recently got Gen 4 as well. And Russia uses the Cyrillic alphabet. So, uh, yeah, you get uh, Gen 4 Cyrillic in Russia as well. But this isn't Russia because of uh, the architecture. You wouldn't see these kind of houses in uh, Russia. As well as the number plates, you wouldn't have a blue badge on the number plate in Russia. So... Yeah, now that we know the country, um, 
I wonder if this ever tells you the city name. I haven't really thought about the <laughs> bins in bins in Bulgaria, but maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, if I want to make a in general guess, southwestern Bulgaria is really really mountainous. Up here, it's uh, fairly flat. Uh, I'll go somewhere here, but I could be off. Oh, <laughs> or I could just be really close by. Okay, well, I didn't expect to be that close, but uh, sure. Um, cool, I'll take it. So, yeah, uh, that works, and let's move on to the next round. <sighs> okay, so looks like we're driving on the right. We have short number plates, so we know we are in North America. Um, well, there are a few other plates, like Argentina has short number plates and whatnot, but... Uh, these kind of houses driving on the right short number plates are very very uh, na and when i say na i mean uh, canada and us in specific um so we are either in canada or the us i was looking at the stop sign but it just says stop we also have front plates so it can't be quebec um it does help to know which uh, states and which provinces have front plates and which don't um, in US and Canada. So I don't really know all of them. I know some of them, uh, but that's a good tip as well. If you want to learn, uh, if you want to get better at US and Canada, you should definitely learn which states have front plates, which don't. And you should also learn what the number plates for each state look like, because if I knew that, I would have been able to guess where I am uh, but unfortunately, I'm not really sure. Huh. I don't really exactly remember which U.S. states have front plates in the east. It feels like northeast U.S. maybe. Or maybe it could be Ontario. Actually, yeah, I kind of want to go Canada now. Now that I think about it. Like uh, one of these suburbs near Ontario. One of these cities, I don't know. Maybe, because Ontario has front plates, but I don't know if this is a Ontario plate or not. But uh, everything else kind of fits, I think. Let's try it. Oh. <laughs> or it's BC. Well, uh, I wish I recognized BC plates. Uh, that's going to make me look uh, quite stupid, but uh, I guess it makes sense. We had some slopes, maybe some hills, but uh, yeah, BC is very mountainous. So we were just downtown Vancouver. Um, now I know. Now I know what a BC plate looks like, I suppose. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm sure some of you got that. Well done. I totally did not. I am really bad at North America and I need to improve. But uh, let's move on to the next round. Ah, uh, this is Saba, isn't it? This just looks like Saba to me. Or is it actually? It might be just mainland Malaysia, actually. <laughs> Wait. But uh, anyway, let's talk about this first. We have uh, double yellow lines in the middle. And we are driving on the left. Um, so, I mean, that happens in Australia as well. You have double, not double yellow, double white lines in the middle. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if we have a white car as well, you don't get that in Australia. And, uh, yeah, it just doesn't look like Australia too much, does it? You have, like, a tropical vegetation. So... Yeah, and you know it's not South America, North America, because they usually have a uh, yellow lines. So that way, you know you are in Malaysia, because uh, Malaysia is the only country in Southeast Asia to have a uh, like a uh, double white lines are very common in Malaysia. So if you see this uh, sort of uh, tropical Southeast Asian vibe, and you see double white lines, you know you are in Malaysia. Uh, it could be mainland Malaysia, it could be Borneo, but this feels like Sabah to me. I don't really have tips on how to differentiate Sabah and Sarawak, because I mess them up quite often myself. I'm trying to figure out if this is just mainland Malaysia, which this pole kind of feels like it's might be a mainland Malaysia pole. I'm not 100% sure. So... Maybe I should just play it safe and go mainland. But I really want to go Sabah here. 
Uh, let's give it a shot. Why not? Ah, okay, good. My vibes were on point. <laughs> it was not a mainland pool. It was just a uh, Sawa. Um, but yeah, I don't really know how to give you tips to recognize Sawa. It's just playing a lot. You just uh, get like a vibe and you just vibe guess. Sometimes the vibe guess is wrong. Sometimes it works out in your favor like it did here. Um, and then, yeah, there are like certain regions in the world for, where your vibes are really strong and certain places where your vibes can be off. Um, I feel like Saba is one of those places where I usually tend to get it, but uh, I've also quite often messed it up. So it is what it is, but uh, I'm, I'm glad I got it this time. And uh, let's move on to the next one. Okay. So we have a yellow line in the middle. As I said, very common in the Americas. Um, and this doesn't look like a US or Canada at all. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It just doesn't look like it. And uh, yeah. From the Latin American countries, the only country with a Gen 2 camera. As you can see, the circular blur at the bottom and top of this camera is a uh, Gen 2 camera. And that's the only country that has it is Mexico. So you know you are in Mexico. Um, now the question is, where in Mexico? I'm just thinking for a second, could this be like a weird Greece? Because sometimes you could get like, no, but that pole doesn't, no, it's not, okay. I just had to consider it for a second. Sometimes you can get weird road lines in like Greece and Turkey and Italy and whatnot, but uh, I think this is just Mexico. Um, Northern Mexico, quite dry. This part of Mexico is quite mountainous. And this uh, part of Mexico is like, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but you once you see it, you know you're in the peninsula. Um, but this looks mountainous, kind of dry. So maybe like San Luis Potosi? That area? I don't know. Let's give it a shot. Or further south? Okay, well... It was uh, in the general mountainous area regardless, so well done if you got closer than me. If you have any tips for getting this area, let me know as well. And uh, that's game two, 19-3-3-3 for me. Uh, mainly lost all my points on this round, but other than that it was not too bad. Um, so that's cool, and let's move on to the third game. So what uh, what map should we play for the third game? I kind of want to try out a different map. How about we try out an... Uh, was it an AI populated world? I think. Um, replayable map with country beings based on population and coverage. So this would be interesting. Um, uh, I'm, I'm guessing we'll get more urban spawns here because it's based on a population. Uh, so that'll be a challenge for me as well because uh, I'm not too good at urban locations. So let's see how this goes. Um, game number three, no moving as usual, and let's go. Um, okay, indeed, this uh, this spawn looks urban. Um, we have the sun in the south, so we're in the northern hemisphere, and again, these kind of buildings should be in Europe somewhere. Looks European. Do we have language? Uh, Leida. Okay, so this looks like Spain um, to me. Uh, just the architecture, the mountains, it feels kind of dry. It's not like a... It feels like a warm place, I guess. So if I had to guess, I'd say this is probably Spain. Maybe Portugal. Ah, but that sign looks like a Spanish sign. So Spanish signs have like a thick red border. And they don't have like a thin outlining border to it. So this is like a very minor thing. But like uh, quite a few countries will have like a thick red border around the sign. And then outside that thick red border they'll have like a very thin white border. But uh, in Spain you don't get that. It's just uh, red all the way to the end. Um, so I'm trying to see if that could be a Spanish sign. Maybe it is. I don't really know. Leida, is that a place? Can I scan? That sounds like a Spanish name as well. 
can I scan to see if I can find it? Um, doesn't really look like it. Um, I kind of want to hedge a bit and go like here maybe. But uh, I don't really know how to region guess Spain too well. The north is quite mountainous, so I know that. But uh, other than that, <laughs> I'm not the best at region guessing. Oh, Leida, right here. Okay, well, I'm glad I saw that. It's a fairly decently sized city. Some of you probably might know it already. Um, can I bother to 5k this? I don't really know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, we have this road angle. Where would that put me? Like here? Hmm. Maybe here somewhere. <clears throat> uh, road turns there. It's, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's pretty tough. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe somewhere here. Oh! <laughs> I guess it makes sense. Trucks travel, cars travel, everything travels. So we weren't actually in Leida. We got abated. Uh, we were in this place. But uh, that's alright. Um, overall we got fairly close. So let's move on to the next round. Um, okay, again. A sun in the south and looks very European. These houses in the distance you can see are quite European. Um, this looks like UK or Ireland to me. Um, these hedges, for example, are quite UK Ireland. Um, and that pole is also a UK Ireland pole with the things that sting, that like sticking out of it. Um, so we should be in one of those places. The British Isles is what I <laughs> recently learned they're called. But uh, those houses in the distance... I think look more Irish. I also associate like a more like a Gen 4 rural roads, and like just when it looks super green in my head, I associate it with uh, Ireland. So I'm leaning more Ireland here, but uh, I could be wrong. I'm guessing that's a city in the east. Um, what's a decently sized city? Uh, let's say we are like west of Athlone. Why not? <sighs> oh, didn't guess. Ah, never mind. We were in UK. Uh, fair enough. So if you got UK there and uh, recognized it, uh, well done. Makes sense uh, being uh, down here. I don't really remember what this, what this, uh, <laughs> what this part of UK is called. But uh, yeah, well done if you recognized it. Um, and yeah, in general, UK Ireland, good enough vibe. But um, yeah, I was in the wrong country regardless. So let's move on to the next round. We have a sun in the south, so we're in the northern hemisphere. And we have this very Asian looking architecture. Um, with a black Google car, this would only mean we are in South Korea. Japan again has Lokyam, so you can't forget that. Um, this is not Lokyam, by the way, so... That's how you know it's not Japan. And then Taiwan will usually have an antenna on the car. Uh, lack of antenna, just a black car would mean we are in South Korea. Uh, if we zoom in on this, you can see some Korean script, Korean language, Hangul. Um, so, yeah. I'm pretty sure we are in South Korea. Uh, because North Korea doesn't have coverage. Um so yeah, uh, somewhere in South Korea. I don't really have a region guess for where in South Korea. Um, I'll just go near Daegu, why not? <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> we were further northwest, but uh, regardless, we were in South Korea. So well done if you got that. Um, okay, round number four. Looks like uh, we're driving on both sides. Um, but no, we should be driving on the right. We have uh, yellow lines in the middle, so we're probably in the Americas. Um, I haven't really made up my mind on where this is myself, but... Um, let's see, we have that pole. 
which could be a Mexican octagonal pull. I think I'm leaning Mexico the most right now. We also have a short plate. Mexico has short plates, just like US and Canada. Whereas uh, a lot of South American countries have uh, longer plates. And uh, yeah, this also looks like a octagonal pole that uh, Mexico is like really common in Mexico. Uh, so I'm going to go with it. I think this is Mexico. It's just raining, but it's probably quite dry. Um, so I'd say this is probably a bit north in Mexico. I could hedge like here somewhere. Could be a bit further south, actually. Let's go near Fresnillo. Fresnillo. Okay. San Felipe. Okay. This time it's closer to San Luis Potosi. But uh, it's good enough. I'll take it. Um, Mexican number plates and Mexican poles were the hint. And what is this? This is a <laughs> really tough location. I don't actually know where this is. So I don't know if I can actually provide any hints either. This looks uh, incredibly hard. Um, let's see, the sun is kind of in the middle. I don't really know, but we have a Gen 4 camera. And the soil is like super red. Huh. <clears throat> like uh, if this, like Brazil has this kind of red soil, but I don't really, I can't really think of where in Brazil would look like this. Uh, maybe Roraima, but Roraima doesn't have this Gen 4. Roraima is this state up here. But uh, no, the soil is like super red. Hmm. <sighs> Could this be new Gen 4 Colombia? But will the soil be this red in Colombia though? Could this be Southeast Asia? It could. Could be like a Thailand or something. Hmm. This doesn't really... Yeah, I mean, it's got to be one of these, right? It's got to be either Southeast Asia or South America, I think. Huh. So what country am I thinking of? Yeah, like, this can't be, like, weird Russia or something, I think. Doesn't make sense. Um, I mean, Thailand, I think, is the most sensible option in my head right now. Gen 4... Indonesia maybe, but this reddish soil throws me away from it. Also, I think quite often India, Indonesia has like a black Gen 4 car, not a blue one. Oh, this doesn't really feel like Thailand though, like the Gen 4 is so crisp. I don't, I don't really know. I don't really get Thailand vibes from this to be honest, but uh, I guess it's not impossible. Wow, they've been hit with a really tough one here. Well done if you guys get this, by the way. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I might just risk uh, my bet, uh, like, uh, or whatever you say it. Just take a risk and go silent. Because I literally don't have any other clue on what this could be. Unless it's like new Gen 4 Columbia, but again, the reddish soil throws me off. Can't be South Africa. Philippines new gen 4 maybe but again the soil is so red so I don't know I'll just go for it let's see where is it oh my god it is Brazil <laughs> uh, damn oh, wow what a location I want to take a look at that again makes sense like uh, I did mention Brazil at the start but uh, it's not common to get a uh, Gen 4 coverage of like these dirt rural roads in, in Brazil. So I really don't think where in Brazil would have this kind of Gen 4 coverage. Uh, but as you can see, it's new coverage, November 2021. Uh, it was probably released even like more recently. So that's crazy. That's uh, We have a rural Brazil road. But uh, I guess it makes sense. Uh, in hindsight, that's a big fat zero for me. And uh, <laughs> let's see, it's 16, 6, 9, 8. So I wasn't doing too bad until that round. But uh, there it is. That's the results. 
um, I don't need to copy the results thing. I have the challenge links. So that's it for today's uh, today's uh, video. Thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll do uh, another play along next week, hopefully. So I'll see you guys then. Hopefully, uh, you guys uh, got some tips from this video, and if not, uh, if you have any tips for me, let me know as well. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.